Welcome to the presentation about GCSE Pollution Indicators. Our key questions are, what are the sources of pollution? What are indicator species? How can indicator species be used as evidence of pollution? Pollution can come from three main sources, air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. There are others, but we shall concentrate on the first two. Causes of pollution. Fertilizers and sewage, which is organic waste rich in nitrates, can cause water pollution and a process called eutrophication. The burning of fossil fuels and generating electricity, industrial processes and transportation can pollute the air, which can cause greenhouse gases and also other pollutants like sulfur dioxide. An indicator species is an organism that either lives in high pollution areas or low pollution areas. They are specifically adapted to living in these two areas. This will give us an idea of the extent to which an area is polluted. Let's talk about indicators of air pollution. There are organisms such as lichens. Lichens are a mutualistic relationship between a fungus and an alga, so they grow together and help each other to live. They grow in exposed places such as rock or tree bark. Air pollutants, especially sulfur dioxide, can damage lichens and prevent them from growing. This makes lichens natural indicators of air pollution. For example, Green, bushy lichens need really clean air. Leafy lichens can survive a small amount of air pollution. And crusty lichens can survive in more polluted air. But all three of these generally live in cleaner air environments. You don't need to remember these for your exam, but you do need to remember that lichens are an indicator species. In places where no lichens are growing, it's often a sign that the air is heavily polluted with sulfur dioxide. They are sensitive to this compound. Let's talk about indicators of water pollution. Scientists can take samples of the invertebrate animals living in a river to see if it's polluted. Invertebrates are animals without a backbone. Some invertebrates are able to live in polluted water and some are not. So if we were to take a sample and examine what was in our water, we would be able to tell what type of pollution area this is. In polluted water, which is cloudy and smelly, with low levels of oxygen due to the decomposition and the bacteria using up all the oxygen, the invertebrates found are not very varied. There's not many different species. They are mostly worms and leeches. In slightly polluted water, which is less cloudy and smelly, there is slightly more oxygen. The invertebrates will be more diverse and we will see more of occurrences of mollusks such as snails and some beetles as well. In clean water, clean water is clear, it has high levels of oxygen and there are many different species of invertebrate found here. Here you'll find many different species of shrimp and many different mayfly larva, which will not tolerate any pollution. This image is on page 187 of your textbook. So, to recap, the indicator species vary according to the levels of pollution in your water. Different types of fly nymphs will only tolerate clean water, so they'll be on the green end. In the middle, the mollusk species will tolerate some pollution, and so you know that the water is slightly polluted if you find lots of these around. If you find lots of worms around, then you know there's high to extreme levels of pollution due to the lack of oxygen. The blood worms and the sludge worms contain hemoglobin levels, which are very high, so they give them a reddish color. This hemoglobin allows them to bind to as much oxygen as they can, so it's a specific adaptation for low oxygen water, which is polluted. Try these questions, pause the video, and then the answers will be revealed later. Okay, if you're ready, here are the answers. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your studies.